Good day guys and welcome to Internet Academy. I am Emmanuel Febu and today we are going to be talking on physics. So first of all, before we talk about physics and go deep into physics, we must first of all define what physics is. So what then is physics? Of course, physics is what a science and engineering course because the studies what the behavior and what the interaction of force, energy, matter. So of course, he studies what the behavior and interaction of what force, energy, and matter. So physics is a science and engineering course or subject that studies the behavior and interaction of what force, energy, and matter. So first of all, we're going to what define these three terms: force, energy, and matter. So what then is force? So of course, we're going to start with force. Of course, so the first thing we have is force. So you should know that force is what an agent of change. Force is an agent of change. It's an external agent that what causes what change of position. Now it comes in two cases. If the body is at rest, when force is being acted by that body, it will what result of motion. Now if the body is in motion, when force is being acted by that body, it what brings about what the body coming to rest. So that's what force is all about. So you should just write that what is an agent of what change, an agent of an agent of what change, or an agent of change of position. So let's talk about energy now. Energy, energy, energy. The ability to do work. The ability to do work is what energy. So energy is the ability to do work. So we have ability. To do work, so that is what energy is. Now let's talk about matter. Matter, matter is anything that what has mass and occupies space. So matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So we can define matter in two words as what characteristics is what mass and volume. So matter is equal to what mass and volume. Of rather, anything that has mass and occupies space, the function of volume is what dimension. Anything that has that occupies space has a volume. So that's what matter is. Now, before we start talking about a um, molecular treatment of um, molecular treatment and properties of matter, we will start by saying what are the types of matter. So we have types of what matter. So let's start with types of matter. We have what? Solid. Shape and volume. It has a definite shape and volume. Then take note. Why does it have a shape, a definite shape and volume? It's because of what? The molecules that make up what? The solid type of matter are held closely together and they move slowly. Example of this material is what? Ice and what? Sugar. So under the type, an example is what? E.g. we have ice and sugar. So ice and sugar is one, an example of what? The solid type of matter. Then the second we have what? Liquid. So we have liquid. Now take note, liquid, unlike the solid where we have a definite shape and volume, the liquid has what? A definite volume, but what? It takes the shape of a container. So under here we have definite volume. But takes the shape of a container. Of 
we continue. So that is what the characteristics of a liquid. An example is what oil and water. Of course, the water has a definite volume, but it takes the shape of what a container, same as oil. Now let's talk about the third one. We have gas. We have gas. Unlike the liquid, which have definite volume, the gas has neither definite what volume and shape. So you have what you can say indefinite, indefinite volume, no shape. So the gas have indefinite volume, no shape, in the sense that it has. No, no definite volume and no definite shape. So that is what the properties of a gas. Example of gas is what? Air and oxygen. Let's take those two. Air and oxygen under the types of gas, which is you're using air and oxygen to explain this. Of course, it doesn't have a definite volume and definite shape. Air doesn't have so an oxygen. Now under the fourth one is plasma. Plasma. Now take note. Now there is in some cases some people confuse plasma and gas more like the same. But plasma is different from gas. Now let me explain plasma. Plasma has all these characteristics, which is indefinite volume or shape. But the difference is now, just like when we heat up a liquid, we heat up a liquid, which is by adding heat, it gives us what gas, right? If we heat a liquid, your result is gas. Now, if we heat a gas, our result will be what? Plasma. So, we say plasma is what? Indefinite volume or shape. So, we can call it what? An ionized gas. It can also be said to be what a super positive and negative charge. So that's what plasma is under the fourth type of what matter. So the concept is easy. Plasma is different from gas. The only characteristics is what indefinite volume, no shape, but what is an ionized gas. Just like when you heat a liquid, the result is gas. If we heat a gas, the result is what plasma. So the concept is very, very easy. So this is all for what the types of matter what physics is all about. Now we're going to talk about what the molecular treatment. So we have molecular treatment and properties of matter. So this is what we have now molecular treatment. And properties of matter. So now, molecular treatment and properties of matter are about two physical quantities that we can use to say um, we can use to examine how matter reacts towards external force. So the two physical quantities are what stress and strain. So these are the two physical quantities that we can use to know how matter reacts to external force stress and strain that's what molecular treatment and properties of matter talking about so now we're going to talk about stress of course the concept of stress is very very easy stress can be what so let's talk about stress so we say stress is what the force acting on a material per unit area so it is signified by this symbol. It is what the force P acting on the material all over what the area. So therefore, stress is measured in what? Of course, this is Newton meter square. So we have Newton per meter square. So this is what the units for stress. Of course, can be measured in terms of Pascal. 
one newton one newton per meter square is the same as one pascal so another unit for stress is what pascal so we say this what the force per unit area now let's talk about the second one strain strain now the concept of strain is very easy strain is what defined as the extension or deformation or elongation per the original length so we can say that is what the extension or deformation over the original length so we can signify the extension by changing x and we can signify this by the original length so take note the concept of strain is it is dimensionless because meters meter over meter to cancel out so it is what dimensionless is a dimensionless quantity so now let's talk about Hooke's law of course there's a relationship here for Hooke's law where we can have a case where the stress in a material is directly proportional towards the strain provided the elastic limit of the material remains constant so now let's wipe this off so we can tell you about Hooke's law relating to stress and strain so we said that um, we can have a case which is Hooke's law relating towards the stress and strain so Hooke's law states that what in relation to the stress and strain of course strain is denoted by this symbol why stress is denoted by this symbol so we can have a case that provided the elastic limit of the material remains constant we can have a case where what the stress in that material is directly proportional to what the strain now of course we said that um anywhere we have a variation for us to remove the variation and bring about a equality sign we must introduce a constant now it is very important to note that we introduce a constant towards the right hand side we cannot introduce a constant towards the left hand side now the constant we are introducing is called young modulus so now we have a case where we have the stress is equal to what capital letter e signifying what young modulus multiplied by the strain where we say e is what young's modulus and of course this is stress this is what strain so therefore when we make young modulus severe formula we have that this is the stress of our what the strain now take note what do we say the stress was so we have stress signifying what force of our what area so let's just make this f for clarity purposes so let's turn this to f and we also say that the strain in that material is what extension of our what original length so let's call this equation one and two so we substitute this into what of course let's call this equation three substituting the stress and the strain into here we have the what the young modulus is equal to what f over e all over what extension over original length here we play with this we have what force over area divided by what extension of our what original length so what we're going to do here is we're going to just play with this of course we're going to change this to what a multiplication automatically becomes what e is equal to what f over e multiplied by what l over what change next so therefore we can have a young model of our what the force multiplied by the length over what area multiplied by extension so therefore we call this equation 4 so this is what the formula for young modulus relating force length area and extension so the concept is easy let's make extension of the formula so it's the same thing as taking extension up here and bringing down the young modulus down so we have the extension is what the force the length over area multiplied by what young modulus let's call this equation 5 
so this is what the formula expressing what force length area and young modulus when we need the extension the subject formula so the concept is easy let's talk about hooke's law relating the force and the extension here we have a case of a constant called stiffness of the material we talked about a case where we have Hooke's law in relation to what in relation to the force and the extension where we can have a case of the constant known as the stiffness of the material and let's first of all now first of all let's draw a diagram that demonstrates the force the length and the extension of the material so let's say we have a diagram looking like this of course let's have a diagram looking like this and let's call this material so let's call from here to here let's call here l and let's call this the extension so this material let's call this dx and there's a fox sort f acting in this material so the concept is easy the more this material is being drawn in this direction the extension also increases so if you notice if we drag this force of course put more force on this and um, point dragging stretching the material to this the material extends of course from here to here goes the original length so we can call a relationship of Hooke's law stating that provided the elastic limit of this material is constant we can have a case where the force in the material or pulling this material or the force applied in this material in that direction is directly proportional towards the extension now this also means that the greater the force the greater the extension of course i've said that earlier illustrating that if you pull this body in this direction more to bring about more more what extension so now of course we see that in this case introduce introduce a word inequality sign bringing about a constant so we have f is equal to what k change in x and we say that k is what the stiffness constant or the stiffness of the material so k signifies the stiffness of the material so let's make case of the formula we have that k is equal to what f over what change in x so let's look at the dimension of k of course this is newton and this is what meter so we can say that k is what newton uh, meters so the concept is easy the force is directional towards the extension of this material of course we introduce our constant called stiffness of the material so this is all for today's class we talked about them um, physics of course we talked about energy force and matter we talked about the types of matter we talked about them um, the four types of matter we talked about solid liquid gas and plasma we also talked about Hooke's law in relation to what stress and strain and Hooke's law in relation to what force and extension of the material so the concept is easy now in this class we'll be talking about stress and strain relationship see you there Hello.